blowout. In this patch, Riot chose to hit Atrox, who was the premier champion to go up with uh, against Urgot. So many other champions got hit, but Urgot, I mean, he just got a little slap on the wrist, so he'll be around for a couple more patches in mid and top lane, most likely. And now KT responding with one of the few champions that can at least contend or try to go even with him. And the Scion, the other option would be like a Rise. And also, I mean, Cassiopeia, she doesn't really care about anyone, I guess, but that's sort of an exception. Yeah. Zoe now locked in for Afrika. And Nocturne on the side of KT, so lots of heavy dive and engage, and I'm not quite sure why you would pick Zoe, knowing that Afrika is trying to just charge headfirst at you. Definitely a bizarre pick to me. Yeah, I mean, he played it the first time in game number one. Wasn't able to pilot it to a victory, and he goes on to it again. So we'll hope that the mystery is solved if Afrika can potentially take a win. And Alistar now banned away by Afrika. Kindred now banned away by KT. Which is uh, a little bit weird. Urgot sort of acts as a counter to Kindred, but I guess maybe they're thinking that Afrika just wants to sit inside of the Kindred ultimate to deny the all-in Cassiopeia Nocturne engage, but that doesn't make a lot of sense to me. And the Gragas is now getting banned away by Afrika. So they're thinking maybe Gragas support would be on the table. Thinking about this last ban, KT taking a long time to take away Kindred and then the Olaf once again will be banned by them as it was in game one. And oh, Afrika. Here it is. There it is. And Spirit, big smile on his face and laughing. Well, we saw how the fiddle went, so you gotta go back to what works. Jarvin 2-0 against Jenner, you know, in the uh, parentheses. But now KT, I mean, their bottom lane isn't entirely decided yet. We don't know if that's gonna be a Cassiopeia mid, or if it's a Cassiopeia top, Shen. Well, Jarvan can ultimate Shen, but then he's gonna be able to block it with the on-hit passive. The Shen also Ooh. being able to basically submarine in on the Nocturne onto whatever carry Umpty's gonna choose to ult. And now KT, last pick. And the only thing that you don't know about right now on Afrika's side is likely the jungler. <gasps> oh, here we go! Aurelian Soul making its way in as that's got to be for BDD. It's going to be the first time, as you see at the bottom, first pick. And it did just get buffed on 9.2 LS. Yeah, he did just get the added stun duration. And what that ends up doing is it allows him to convert another passive hit and an auto attack in. So that's the way that you look at it from a damage standpoint. Uh, BDD was one of the original Aurelian Soul enthusiasts when he first came out. It's definitely not a stranger oh, it is. to the champion. Oh, Kuro and Kramer in the audience. Yep. Hello. Kuro and looking, looking, yeah, <laughs> looking nice today. Very classy. Nice watch too. Wow. Showed up to work. He showed up. He showed <laughs> up here to watch. Is yeah. what he's here for. So, last pick for Afrika is Camille, and I, the, the whole thing just sort of blows me away. KT opens with Cassiopeia, follows it up with Nocturne Scion, and then Afrika says, you know what, actually no, we're gonna choose champions that engage into you. And so yet again, <laughs> just like in game number one, KT showed their hand face up, Afrika just disregards it entirely, and chooses a composition that does worse what KT's is trying to accomplish, has some gears available to it, but I think that KT's draft, or Afrika's draft, is definitely weaker than in game number one. So we're gonna have to see how this ends up doing. Look at the draft, Scion, Nocturne, Aurelian, Soul, Cassiopeia, and Shen. They have globals, they have pseudo globals. They have champions that roam and go everywhere together. Yeah. It is gonna be so difficult for Afrika to control the vision and try to stabilize this game. This entire game hinges on Camille being able to get advantages early with the Zoe, lock up the Aurelian Soul, control the River Vision, and try to get to the mid game with enough of a gold lead to force it down KT's throat. And as always, easier said than done, LS. We've seen so many teams come out with a certain composition, 
and failed to play to their win objective. So we'll have to wait and see if Afrika can turn it around here up against KT as we hop into game two. As uh, I'm getting the word that the game is paused, as you guys can see it here on the screen as well. So looks like we will have more delays, LS. Everybody's most fun thing, as I can see the face of Aurelian, so he looks really ready to get into it. BD's PC is lagging is the, the name here, the name of the issue. Hopefully no Aurelian soul bugs. Oh, <laughs> oh no, don't even, don't even I say I heard you that. like pause this, Brendan. <laughs> So, no. I put a pause in your pause yeah. as we're layering them here. Yep. Well, so like I said about the team composition, I mean, you look at Afrika's team comp again, there's no wave clear. They can't resist Baron sieges. They can't take straight up team fights because there's way too much access to their backline. I don't know how Zoe is supposed to be able to be protected. I don't know how Lucian's supposed to be able Battle to be protected. Battle Zoe. Who on <laughs> a KT does Jarvan even want to ultimate? I'm not really sure where the direction of the comp's going. It's sort of like a choose-your-own-adventure book. Hey, you know, it's it's right on schedule, Bandersnatch. It was like watching Bandersnatch, but there was there would be like this highlight on your screen that would tell you if you do this, you're going to die, which is basically <laughs> what KT's comp was trying to tell them. And they're like, you know what? Yeah. I think it's a good idea anyway. So definitely really interesting. Yeah. I, I think mean, it's going to be very it. hard for Afrika. You mentioned it before that they do have ways to win and they do have win conditions, but it does rely on you getting ahead early and the enemy team perhaps making some mistakes. So you got to be really confident to pilot this one. And honestly, I mean, Afrika, the last thing they should be is confident right now as they're down at two and three and they're up against a, a team that beat you in game number one. So I'd probably avoid going for those kind of risky comp compositions and go for something a little bit safer, but Afrika don't agree with me. They're going to be throwing um, Dread onto very much comfort, at least. So a big Camille player. He wants to play it before 9.3 when uh, Jungle Camille does get gutted. And uh, I, I suppose if there is one guy that you want to try to have pilot this kind of Camille get ahead composition, it would be Dread. So, yeah. can't fault them too much for that. Yep. Ooh, another more KT Rolster fans. These guys are proud. true fans. They got all the gear. Yep. And showing Kuro and Kramer again. I assume that Kramer is uh, back because we're about to have Sol uh, Solna? Solna? Yeah. yeah. The Lunar New Year. Yeah, Lunar New Year. In well. Korea. well, let's get the fan chance, and it seems like we're actually going to jump into game two, guys. And, yep, we're jumping right in. Here we are, jumping in, and if you guys are just joining us, it will be LCK's first Aurelian Soul pick, piloted by one of the big Aurelian Soul players, BDD. We were expecting this, we were talking about this, but didn't know that it would come out today. We were, when I say we were expecting it, I meant that eventually one of these big Aurelian Soul players was just gonna get too excited about the changes and say, I, uh, I'm gonna play Aurelian Soul. And Spirit, also, hopping onto his undefeated AP Jarvan support. Can't wait to see if this actually works again. One of the interesting things about Aurelian Soul 2 is with all the mid lane champions constantly getting hit over and over, there's this thing I talk about where stat checkers end up becoming more powerful, where their kits aren't really designed to fit into well sculpted team compositions or they don't really have a theme, such like Syndra, for instance. And Aurelian Soul. One of his main problems was he didn't do damage and then he wasn't able to come online and the itemization changes. Well, if no one deals damage, that's okay. He still gets access to his kit. He's still a massive roamer and a threat. And now he has a little bit of added stun. Oh boy, this is... <laughs> Already, the crowd's getting into this AP Jarvan support. Also has aiming who took W first, but Spirit, he's okay. gonna get ignited and has to flash, oh boy as Arcane Comet 
on the Cassiopeia. Very standard as well. See you later, Lane. Cassiopeia is a cool champion. It was fun while it lasted, yep. you know? All right, so unless something catastrophic happens down in bottom lane, like in game number one, we're going to get oh to God. see <laughs> why Cassio. Okay, well, report Snowflower. <laughs> huh. And aiming, getting zoned off a little bit here as Spirit was forced to recall and return back down into bottom lane. One of the things I, I'm not sure of is I, I understand that Spirit, go he has Aerie. I know that Jarvan is going to end up building Zhonya's and whatnot. I, I don't totally understand the rationale behind Spell Thieves. Uh, it's just you're not going to reliably be able to stack the gold quick enough. Targon is going to help accelerate your ADC more. I just think that you benefit from it all around a lot more. Yeah. Wow, Dread is really trying to force this issue. Yeah, I mean, this was the name of the game, as you mentioned it. Yep. Try to get something going. He already got his flash after hitting level three, so he was just looking for it once again, and no doubt he will make another return to the mid lane. Oh, man. <laughs> Here we go. It's all about killing BDD as well. Yukal's going to get stunned up, and it's really unfortunate this he takes really good all bait. this damage early on if he's not going to get baited. Although, here comes Dread into the backside, the flash on in, the cleanse comes in, but is it enough damage through the magic shield? First blood, very well executed over to yeah, Dread. That was an absolutely beautiful bait by Yukal. A lot of people probably watching this wondering, well, why is Yukal taking this donkey trade where he just seems like he's getting clapped for a ton of HP? Well, it's to make BDD have false safety in the lane thinking, wow, I have such an edge right now, and he inches up a little bit further in the lane he feels yeah. more safe and then dread able to just come around one more time two times the charm as they're able to make that kill work he doesn't even insta cleanse either so at that point if you feel like you're gonna die maybe just don't even use the cleanse as he wasn't even that close to getting away as dread really wants to make something happen in all the lanes now Kingan does have his flash. Whoa. He's going to get the stains here as well. Kingan, you're in so much trouble. He's going to flash at the last second, but the what? flash through from Keen as well. He waited a long time to get away from that one, and he paid the price. Yeah, that was really bizarre, and Dread's making these things happen. We talked about this in the champ or in the post-champ select. This is what Camille needed to do. Nocturne's probably question mark pinging his teammates right now. <laughs> yeah, I'm up... Uh, you know, I'm up four or five camps. If you guys could just not die, that'd be great. But take a look at this replay. Dread able to stun Kingan right there. They get the flip onto Atrox, and then Kingan doesn't flash until he has one auto attack left remaining. News to me. So, I mean, I think in that case, you just either flash the hookshot or you flash the disdain. Right? Yeah. You, you yeah, wait until they, they use one of their big engage tools and you just get away from it and you play it safe. Not hand over another assist to the Camille and a kill to the Urgot, who's already enough of a lane bully. So definitely okay. some question marks around all of our heads as we watch this one. And here's one of the things is even though Nocturne is power farming, because Camille is only occasionally taking her camps, the respawning is rubber banded camps. So she's getting a, a reacceleration to her experience gain, and even though Nocturne is up 23 CS, well now even more, he's up 17 farm right now, he has his rubber band camps coming up, Camille's able to slowly keep recovering by using the fact that her camps are higher level than her. Yeah, that is true. Well, KT do have one of these lanes that's going really well in the bottom lane, already the Cassiopeia is given aiming the long arm of the law right now as spirit had to go back again as did aiming another time oh my God. and dreads in the mid lane again at least this time bdd is playing it very carefully as he is going to be able to get away from this one relatively safely definitely looking like he wanted to force that issue i think that yukal was standing a little bit too far back to try to go for a flash of bubble okay dread only knows the word gank <laughs> I mean, the more you cast this guy and the more you hear about him, that's what they said. I mean, Spirit uh, told us about this guy. Um, as, you know, Spirit used to be the jungler for Afrika. Yep. Not anymore. Um, Dread is the new guy. And we asked about him, and he's like, this guy is so aggressive in the jungle, you would not even imagine. All right? And uh, 
This is one of the first games that's a, a true example of that, where he plays his Camille, one of his favorite champions, and he says, I'm just not going to leave the mid lane alone. I'm just going to sit here. I'm going to go get a buff and then come back to mid lane. That's my job. And, I mean, so far it's working out this game, but it's not quite enough. Nocturne hit six. This is that power spike dread. If you go for this, you're going to have a bad time as Nocturne is in. Oh, he got. Oh, oh. Nocturne <laughs> fell asleep. It's night night time. So. Yeah. Take a little nap, as that's really unfortunate. Oh, Justine going to miss. So you just, just get a little bit more chip damage there. On to King and in the top side, rather than potentially pushing for a kill on the flashless Scion. Not quite sure why they killed the cannon. The wave was coming into them. They had multiple spellcasters and a cannon. They could have just froze on aiming in spirit, but instead said, you know what, aiming? We like you. We're going to give you some CS. <laughs> Yeah, and here comes BDD and Umti after level six. Oh, okay. BDD. Oh. <laughs> and now All Umti right. taking a ton of damage on the backside. Oh, just bad feels for the side of KT. At least they zoned them off the turret, but that could have gone a lot better. Well, even though they are getting a lot of plates, these plays are definitely being done sloppy in the setup for them. Not the cleanest. <laughs> Had they just let the wave come into them, aiming and spirit would have to have overextended, making it that much easier for yeah. BDD and Umti to make that play happen. And it's not like you need to make this play underneath the turret and then immediately get the plates. You're already winning really hard. You look at the gold graph, uh, or the gold chart at the top. Even though Zoe and Urga are ahead in CS, Nocturne's making up for that gold difference, and Cassiopeia and the Targon on Shen is really helping with KT generating their gold lead. Yeah. Well, Spirit's farming, so he's got that going for him. Has his stopwatch coming along oh so slowly. I have no doubt in my mind that he's going to just go straight for Zonia's again. Uh, seems to be the build from the side of Spirit. Still waiting to hit level 6 as BDD, even though it was a unfortunate beginning to the game, is having a lot more fun, especially with Nocturne level 6. And even the Shen, with all the control they have in the lane, he's just hopping mid every once in a while just to give that extra amount of pressure, clear out the wards, and say, our Aurelian Soul is going to be safe. And they are indeed making him extremely safe. As Urgot, meanwhile, up in the top lane, he's very close to his Black Cleaver com completion. Once he completes that, he becomes a different champion. So right now there's definitely some downtime. Shen in close proximity to mid. Spirit's coming for the gank here. He's going to be spotted on a ward as his Dread on the right side here. Takes that control ward away, and Snowflower not going to play in the danger. Just taunts his way out of that one. 500 gold lead here for KT. As Cassiopeia about to return down into bottom lane. Has that tier and the lost chapter. Yukal gets handed over the blue buff, but... As we are nearing the end of the early game and we're approaching mid game, I don't feel like Afrika generated themselves enough of an advantage despite that great early game start. Yeah, definitely does feel that way. Cloud Drake is going to be the first one here. We'll see if either team decides to go for it as once again, Spirit now level six is looking to join up into some ganks. As the river was controlled there, very much so by Afrika, trying to get on in. As here we go, okay, Scion just going up to the top lane. Thought maybe he was looking to make a play with some of his other buddies, as Dread is waiting in the right side, but he does have to get away, as you mentioned all the semi-globals, the globals, all the map control that KT have built into their composition. It's really coming into play in the bottom side, as Dread has really not been able to get anything done down there. Speaking of not being able to get anything done, Kingan probably not going to be able to get much done left in top lane as Keen is about to return with a Black Cleaver. And interestingly enough, Kingan has the Sunfire Cape. Maybe the rationale for that is that Dread and Spirit want to just be on top of the KT team comp, and so he's trying to maximize his damage value there. But it will stunt him a little bit against Keen on that Urgot up in top lane as that's not the best first item in this matchup. Mm -hmm. So Urgot right now is really far ahead, but 
Scion coupled with a Nocturne gank right here could definitely put an end to that. They're certainly looking for it. They're going to land the stun. I thought maybe Umti would just go ahead and start up the Rift Herald. Try to go with that. They have that forward control ward. But not starting it just yet. He's just hanging around the top side river. Lots of vision control to the side of BDD up there. So he'll be happy with that for now as they do spot the Camille in the jungle. Now they know exactly where she is. They know where she can and can't be for the next two minutes or so. Despite counting her CS from when the last time they saw her was oh uh, Dread. As the smite comes in and Umpty is just going to take that one away for Dread. Not really able to do much in that one had no real vision of the Nocturne coming in. Now you saw Camille, she's 48 CS. You last saw her down in bottom, so you know, okay, well, she's gonna go over and do her wolf camp now. If anyone dies to her, you're getting reported. <laughs> yeah, as KT looking to start this Herald, look at the positioning of BDD. If yeah. Ucal tries to come around from the corner, really like that they're saying, okay, maybe Aurelian's right there. We don't wanna get caught by a Q. Okay, Paranoia coming in, just trying to deny vision before they can get in. The Insta Cleanse from BDD as the Rift Herald does go the way of KT. Spirit looking for that engage. He's gonna get two members, but in goes Snowflower. Trying to get the big taunt in here. Scion as well. They're just gonna burst through that support, but down goes the Fear Beyond Death. They're gonna get on top of Zenit too, as well as Zoomti will get dived upon on the bottom side. Low health bars here from Afrika, but they are able to take a bunch of kills. Yeah, and this is a really big moment for them as they might be able to threaten BDD underneath this turret here, although they don't seem like they're interested. All it would have taken was a bubble from Ucal or <laughs> Dread willing to sacrifice himself. They don't, they don't want plates. They don't want turrets. Tell us what they no, want. what they want is, is clowndry. Clowndry. Exactly. <laughs> that's what they... LS's that's favorite the favorite thing. <laughs> <laughs> so they do end up picking this up, and the next dragon that's going to spawn is an Ocean Drake, so not the greatest of dragons here in game number two. And taking a look at this fight, so Paranoia is used to deny vision away from Afrika. They end up getting that Rift Herald, and then right here, Dread and Spirit, they just go in. And you can see BDD not being able to really get too much damage in on the fight. They get the kill right there, but then Cassiopeia got hit by the bubble, not able to do a lot, and Umpty not having his ultimate available, Dread and Keen walk away from this fight with very low HP. Yeah. And the game, at least in the gold chart, is even right now. Yeah, it turns out to be even. I mean, Cassiopeia is still having fun, but in the last fight, the Illusion down on the bottom side for Afrika, able to pick up two kills and an assist. So getting the majority, the lion's share of the gold from that last fight, he's gonna be pretty happy about that one. Also a level up on the Cassiopeia, so. You get that Lucian online, you allow him to pick up the Blade of the Rune King. And now they're looking to make a play down towards the bottom side, just loop around here oh. on top of Snowflower, and they have no idea. Now they're gonna have a big idea right in the face of Snowflower. He's in a lot of trouble. He's able to put down the Dodge Circle, and the Cassiopeia does fight back quite a bit, trying to chunk down Dread and go 1v3, but here's Zoe. Forces that flash away, but Dread, oh, oh, so close. With that Arcane Comet, nearly goes down. And meanwhile, Rift Herald being summoned into mid. The mid tier one turret is so important for this Afrika team uh -oh. composition, but Umti maybe gonna die. Okay. Wow. Yeah, does get that one down as well. He spell shielded it. Yeah. Pretty Nicely cool. Nicely blocked. Yep. Yeah. Good predict as King and he, you know, He's not, he, doesn't want to be, he doesn't really want to be part of this game. Just having fun up in the top side, takes out a turret. Take another look at this right here. And now, remember, Zenit has flash available. You can see Dread almost looks like he wasn't interested, but Zenit holding the ultimate until next year. <laughs> not able to really do much and just barely missed oh. out on the kill against Dread. So definitely a mechanical blunder right there. He's waiting for 2020. Well, so wait for that one. Snowflower now is seemingly in a bit of trouble. Does have Zenit right behind him, so he is going to be okay. But unfortunately, just gifted over the control ward to the side of aiming. 
And Afrika, I mean, they've been doing this in in a lot of their series. They they look to make these very forceful plays that require opponents handshake into it. And when you have a team composition that you know can't go late game, I guess you might feel like, well, this is what we have to do to try to win this game. We're behind on turrets. Look at the turret HP across the board for KT. It's going to be so difficult for Afrika to actually penetrate them outside of maybe this bottom one, which is only even possible because of the priority that they have. Yeah. And Dread is essentially being a third laner in the bottom side, just trying to keep them safe as now they want to get on top of Umti. He does spell shield the stun, but going in the back line, there is the stopwatch. As here comes oh. King and Big Stun onto that one. He's going to save Snowflower as, oh, he might burn down, but not quite. In goes Dread as BDD once again trying to go 1v3 as the rest of them are distracted. Snowflower able to pick up a kill. Support v support as Afrika, unfortunately, this time around went a little bit too deep. And they're going to be punished for that one as only Dread and Keen do live. Yeah, and Dread and Keen running for their lives right now. And what this is going to mean is that KT is going to be able to pick up minion waves in mid and bottom, although it does look like Urgot will be able to pick that up. Wow, uh, uh, I can't believe that what? stun hit. How did that... What? Yeah, that was really strange. I think uh, the wolves were even surprised. They're so uh, mad at King, and they're like, that wasn't supposed to hit. King and Salm go, huh. <laughs> go, back and, go back into your den. I wonder if that's because he's technically... I don't, I don't even want to go through the mental gymnastics of that one. Either way, a uh, bunch of turrets going down. They get mid and the bottom lane. So tons of gold going the way of KT as we see this fight once again. Yeah, so Umti right there trying to spell shield gets locked up. And you can see the spirit comes in too. So stopwatch being used by everyone. Beautiful uh, broken hitbox by Kingen able to land onto aiming. That really didn't look like it hit, but apparently it did. And then right here, Spirit, you can see he gets picked off by Snowflower. Dread gets Snowflower, but it's important to note, he used his flash for this. And killing Snowflower, doesn't, it didn't get them anything. It got him an extra 300 gold. Well, congratulations. The next team fight that takes place in the next three, four minutes, you're not going to have flash. And I can promise you that your flash is going to be a lot more important in that fight than Absolutely. it was to collect 300 gold. Absolutely. I mean, you consider that where he wants to go. That fight was kind of just, unfortunately, Umti was in a kind of disadvantageous 1v1 position versus the Camille, so he just is able to go in without his flash there. But consider playing front to back behind Scion when you're trying to get on top of Zenit. How can you do that without your flash if you are the Camille? As uh, Umti, wow, he's having a little bit of trouble there as the taunt does come in onto the Zoe. As uh, Spirit, no, wrong team. My good friends, now this is the wrong side. Whoa. He is able to actually oh. get away, but oh, there's the big stun. Nicely done from the side of Zenit as he was trying to make the big Jarvan escape actually happen. As now Kingen, nearly going to go down, but does have that uh, shield to keep him alive from that Fear Beyond Death. Really close call right there. Definitely did look like Keen was going to be able to get that Fear Beyond Death. You can see Dread wanting to go in, but he has vision of Kingen on that side. Knew that a stun was maybe coming. Oh, a bubble but no follow-up going to be able to happen. And so now some posturing, nothing much really able to occur as there's no minion wave. Looks like some people are recalling. Just gearing up for the A ram. Oh! As uh, Ucal, he's on fire. That's, I think, three in a row now. Really trying to land that poke down and make that Zoe useful while he can, while it's not in a 5v5 situation as Afrika Putting the high priority on the one objective that they really can grab right now will be the Ocean Drake. And a second one will be coming in as the third Drake of the game. And that bottom wave right now, the uh, close proximity, going to allocate it into one of the carries. Top lane wave, you can see the pings going down onto it. Maybe KT want to look to utilize it. Now this is KT's chance to punch back. All the jungle camps up, by the way, so KT going to be able to pick them up as well. And Dread is behind in levels, so this is not a very fortunate situation to be in, especially losing the Golems. Another one. Yep, and uh, that one a little bit easier to get down. The Miasma is going to be good on top of the Urgot, as actually King in going to blow his ultimate to uh, just get away from that one. As Dread does have a lot of kills. 
You were talking about how he is going to have a bunch of those camps denied and taken away. Well, he didn't want them in the first place. He only he only likes kills. He's not actually a guy that likes CS, especially when he's playing uh, Camille. Camille is still one of the strongest junglers in the game, and I mean, this game it had a fantastic early game. So she is still quite powerful. Definitely able to delete some champions in the blink of an eye, but just so difficult against this KT composition, and it's only gonna get worse the longer the game goes. The Scion's gonna keep getting tankier. It will eventually hit a point where his tankiness sort of becomes redundant, but for the most part, it, it, it's gonna be hard for Afrika's primary carries to get through him, and that just means that KT's gonna be able to play front to back with Cassiopeia and Aurelian Soul. The flag here from Spirit. Can do a little bit of poking, but also good for checking brushes and also giving some nice attack speed. Got that nice little buff on the previous patch. So Spirit trying to make a case for the support Jarvan, but a lot of people not convinced, including myself. Slowly working towards that Zonyas, as you can see. The arm guard is coming in eventually. Everyone else kind of just going standard in terms of their builds based on what I saw quickly there. And if we look at KT's economy right now, a lot of the champions are pooling several hundred or even a thousand gold. So most likely they just want to get a recall off before the next team fight would end up taking place. And if Afrika can look at them and be like, okay, they've been on the map for quite a while. Let's look at their recipe items. Maybe they're trying to hit a timing on a recall. If we can force them to fight before that, then the gold deficit that you see at the top, it's artificial. Because even if KT is ahead 3,000 gold right now, it doesn't matter if it's all inside of their inventory and not actually the on battlefield stats that they're getting benefit from. So there's a small timing window that could maybe be abused by Afrika coming off Fountain. But if KT gets the recall off, it's gonna be a very big nightmare situation for Afrika. Still waiting on that one as just a lot of posturing around the Baron. Nobody really able to make any big plays towards that objective just yet. And it looks like there is a ward on it right now with no denial from the side of KT. So that's kind of unfortunate from them. As the Nocturne looks like he wanted to go into potentially the GA, but uh, is teching into some other items along the way. And Ocean Drake coming up in a minute, not the most exciting dragon. There's definitely no need for either team to have a massive priority for it. And what that ends up meaning is that both teams can just sort of wait and collect items, but it's not really what Afrika should be in the market for. They need to try to control vision right now around the left-hand side of the map and try to get some sort of a pick, although it's so difficult to do. Yeah. Trying to relive the plays up against Dom on yesterday by having the Camille wait in the brush and seeing if they can pick anyone off that wants to use the plant and get up to top lane faster like Nuggery did yesterday. But no one biting the bait. We've kind of just sat down and gotten into a bit of a lull here as no team wants to make any big pushes towards any of the other objectives. But BDD actually now saying, I'm going to go real hard up in the top lane. And he's pushing quite hard indeed as Afrika saying that they wanted Umti. And all it cost them was a Jarvan ultimate. Okay, Scion coming in here, not quite able to land that unstoppable onslaught as now Dread is going to have to hop the wall as then it was uh, just threatening the damage to come in. BDD now extremely fast, looking to land that stun onto aiming as Keen trying to come into the front and just deny that one. And he will go on to the Camille as he does not get feared up with that hook shot. Another bubble to land onto King and as they want to go into this one, but stunned up is the Urgot. Man, he is so tanky in that front line, but Spirit not even halfway as tanky as Cassiopeia eventually. Cassiopeia's cool champ. Cassiopeia is able to just rip shreds through that Urgot. As he was kind of just left alone, Spirit was trying to help him as, oh boy, oh. there's the big stun. Aiming did pack a cleanse in this game, thankfully. It's not gonna go down, but <laughs> you can see what BDD can do in this champ. Yeah, and the damage output 
from KT in these sustained team fights is just so high. Fafrika even wants a chance to win. Yukal either needs to poke someone down low enough or just outright delete them, or Dread and Spirit have to do that for him. Dread looking for the steal. They're going to deny vision first as well as the plants. Can That's he step guess one. it? He gets the taunt. Now you go for the burst. Okay, can they get it? In goes Dread, and he's not going to be able to pick it up as Zoe will get a kill on the Cassiopeia, but the Baron, most importantly, will go to the side of KT. Yeah, and that was a really close call. I think I saw the Baron go to 78 HP, so I don't think anyone really won that Baron. <laughs> but nonetheless, maybe I was wrong there, but does go over to KT, and that means that the Afrika team comp is going to have a really big problem handling the Baron buff minions. So right now they're, they're shredding through the minions, they're making it so, hey KT, you have Baron, but you don't have minions to use them with. And unless Kingan teleports into top lane, which honestly right now isn't that bad of a call, Freka, they gotta get that Ocean Drake. Oh yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. Ocean Drake. All right. Let's uh, let's potentially get an Infernal Here spot for KT. Give Infernal, give Infernal an Infernal. Oh, no, just mountain? It. All right, we'll take it. Yeah. All right, KT will take that. Thank you very much, Afrika. <laughs> Appreciate it. Well, take another quick look at this team fight. You can see that Umti able to say, hey, Dread, do you remember me? As he locked him up right there with the paranoia. And then even though Yukal was hitting these bubbles, just watch the damage that comes out from Cassiopeia and Aurelian Soul. As Look at that flash, too. The, the members of Afrika, they're too short range. You can't get into range of Aurelian Soul or Cassiopeia. You don't have the damage to contend with them. You really don't, and that was a perfect example of it. And we take another look at this. It got down to 95, and it looked like Dread was early on a smite, yeah. potentially. And so that was really good execution, close. though, by yeah. KT. First Shen takes the blasting cone over, says, okay, you can't come over this way. And then he goes for the taunt, but then KT didn't burst it immediately. And so still, Dread had an opportunity to potentially steal. So Trying to bully down to you, or Umti, rather, but they're going to be punished for it. Oh, now everybody God. is the front line, as Cassiopeia easily does damage behind. Lock them up, boys. This game is a done deal, as triple kill of the Cassiopeia the comp working its magic, as now KT could look for the win. Yeah, and that's definitely going to be it. The death timers are way too high. Spirit and Dread, not the two champions that you want to respawn if you're even trying to have a hope of surviving this push. And with all five members of KT still alive, Demolish as a rune coming in handy as well. Baron minions, this is it for game number two. Lining up was Afrika saying, hey, take me, Scion, and that he did as the rest of KT able to put the nail in the coffin. 2-0 is the very unsurprising score whenever I am casting for KT up against Afrika. Guys, that's my 11th series in a row that has gone to 2-0. I have not cast a 2-1 series just yet. We'll see if that changes in the, in the second one as KT should be very ecstatic about their win. They finally pick up a second one in a... Well, in here, in the LCK, they're going to go ahead and shake hands. KT definitely deserve to pick up that victory. Well played. Yeah, and KT in game number two definitely looked a lot more decisive and aware of what their comp wanted to do and how to do it. And then it sort of helped that Afrika's comp sort of helped them too. <laughs> they were... Yeah. KT was like, you know, we want to come at you. And then Afrika is saying, you know, that's what a coincidence. <laughs> like... <laughs> That's all, sort of all that we can do without Zoe. So nice 2-0 win for KT here. And for Afrika, Darwin suffers a loss. And yeah. I mean, the story still continues that they're doing these wonky things with picks and bans and whatnot. But for Isle of Move being your head coach and having no fay, where is the standard traditional strong play and why are they relying on these weird wonky... This is like watching what I would imagine a NA team in Korea trying to do. These unorthodox strategies, off the wall ideas, winning occasionally with it because it does take people off guard and it can definitely throw people off kilter. But here against KT today, they did fall. You see only some sad faces on the side of Afrika, except Spirit, who never stops smiling. He says, cheer up, boys. We'll get them next time. The never-ending joy just coming out of that guy as 
KT, on the other hand, should be very satisfied with their win. Now, they do have a win over someone that is not Jyn Air, so that <laughs> looks very nice for their standings. As I'm not sure if they will move up in the standings after taking this one. I'm taking a look at it now. Looks like they should be exactly tied with Damwon Gaming, funnily enough. So, down there, tied for eighth, will be KT and Damwon. But it's, it's a different feel as Damwon have taken four losses in a row, whereas KT have taken a couple of victories in recent times. So, they're kind of on the up and up, whereas Damwon certainly has some stuff to figure out before they go into their next series. Speaking of next series, we have a very good one. Coming up next, Sandbox takes on Griffin as both teams are undefeated. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't get better than that, really. I mean, we were expecting Griffin SKT to be close, but then SKT kind of got stomped as Griffin do look untouchable. As Sandbox, they are 5-0 and zero in series as well, but they have taken two game losses. So definitely something to take note of. I can actually check here exactly which teams those were. It was SKT and Tom won, so can't really blame him for that one but sandbox also the surprising kind of dark horse here yep. in the lck everybody kind of had them at eighth place ninth place some people even said 10th place but they're here in second place yeah. trying to overcome griffin as nobody has touched griffin they have not lost a single game the only one that was even close was hanwha light right the first game where they were down 8,000 gold and then viper's like i'm playing kaiser so yeah <laughs> yeah whatever you know i'm, I'm still gonna win this game so very curious to see if Sandbox can even touch them. Even a game win is a win, I would say, yeah. for Sandbox up against a team like Griffin. Yeah, and I don't think that we've seen a team in Korea. And we've seen teams go on amazing streaks and, you know, keep winning all the time. They've never looked as dominant as Griffin has here in the Season 9 spring. And we'll see if Sandbox can actually take them down. Because like you were saying, coming into the split, no one would have expected this to be one of the premier matchups that we would be experiencing in the first round robin. And yet we're here. Maybe Sandbox has something up their sleeve for Griffin. You know, I, I would highly expect it, at least in one game. Something wonky, something weird. Maybe some kind of flex like a Jace jungle or, you know, some, something off kilter to try to get some winning lanes, I'd say. Could be the way for Sandbox. They do have some very spectacular pick ban drafting. As if you guys are taking a look at this game, in the beginning it was actually looking like KT weren't taking look, the best look of Look at fights, that hitbox. I know. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a big one. He's I a think big boy. He was so impressed with Kingan moving that body the way that he did. He was just stunned. <laughs> Absolutely fantastic. And then right here. Maybe you could make the argument that Dread flashed because he thought that he wouldn't get to the Blasting Cone before Shen could. Yeah. And then he would die. But I, I guess I'm not too sure what the cool time would be uh, right at that moment on the hook shot. So, And then this was the team fight that sealed the deal. Absolutely no way for Afrika to contend in a sustained team fight. They should have just backed off once it was clear that Dread was in the clear, but instead tried to force the agenda, and they learned very quick. You don't do that against Cassiopeia. And AP Jarvin support doing exactly what it does best and dying immediately in that fight as, I mean, they're just lining up for it here. This is just trying to chase Umti in a desperate maneuver. And Cassiopeia is getting the, you know, the, the fight of her life, essentially. Just playing front to back and saying, I'll just do all the damages I would expect her <laughs> to have. Uh, probably the most damage in this game as a lot of the fights were just sustained. Her in the back, killing tanks. Yeah. And that's what she's designed to do. And we were talking about it in the draft. Uh, KT opens Cassio, and then you respond Lucian Urgot. Great, you don't have a lot of range. But before we talk about that, MVP Kingan has 100 MVP points, kill participation 83.3%. He did hit actually quite a lot of clutch yep. knockups and his ultimate. And this is actually the one that I'm thinking about. Just look at Take this look, another, 18 another wheeler. Look coming in right there, and he single-handedly removed Lucian from the fight. Yeah. I mean, you can't do much more than that, especially because Lucian, probably the only champion that could have saved this fight at this point. Yeah, I mean, the drifting was really on point. Yeah. I mean, he curved around the mid lane brush there and really got on top of him, so nicely done. I, I think he does deserve that one, perhaps the Cassiopeia, but it's not like 
Zenit was making the plays happen himself. Yeah. So he was just doing Cassiopeia things. Either way, I'm going to hand it to g Sun to help out with the translation. Thank you very much, guys. We're going to be joined by Snowflower and Kingen from KT Roaster. Snowflower, it's your first MVP after joining KT Roaster. How do you feel? It did uh, take a long while, but getting the MVP doesn't really matter. I'm going to do my best to make sure KT Roaster to pick up victories. Again, this is also your first MVP at LCK. How do you feel? We're finally tasting how victory tastes like. I'm trying not to forget this, and we're going to keep this victory going. Snowfall, you are one of the young guns of KT Roaster, and you are the oldest member of KT Roaster currently, so are you the main shot caller? Well, actually, we all five players are always talking about what they want to try and play. And we're going to just pick the best situation at, at every moment. So I'm not the leading shot caller. We're just coordinating everything. There were a lot of outplays on your Thresh today. A lot of people are saying that Thresh is the fearless champion. Since oh, Rocket got nerfed a lot. Well, uh, I thought Thresh was actually a really good champion since last year. I can't say it's a top tier yeah, champion, but it is indeed a good champion. Spirit, he played Fiddle Sport. How was it? Well, a lot of people play Fiddlestick against Thresh, but if you land your hook on Fiddlestick, it is actually really tricky for them to play against it. So I think it's 50-50. And Afrika went with Kane jungle, but Umti, Umti is also a good Kane player, so did he give any comments about it? Well, KT Rolser, we also to try a lot of experiments on Kane and Umti. He personally is a really good Kane player. So we actually didn't have any special comment about it. And let's move on to game two, Kingen. I heard that you went to the same high school with Yuka. You did say you want to take him down for sure. I'm really happy that I got the victory. And when we handshaked it after game, Yuka told me it was a good game, so it felt really good. And also, I felt a little bit sorry. It's a true friendship, I guess. Were you guys friends when you were in the same high school? Yeah, we were like just friends, but after I joined Kate Roaster, we became really close friends. So in the game number two, BDD played, played Aurelian Soul. Why was that? So during the practice game, we did mention about Aurelian Soul, but we actually didn't really practice it during the scrims. But BDD had, has a lot of confidence on Aurelian Soul and also all the other mid champions. That was probably the reason why. And you were facing up against Kien, the national top lane there. I was really nervous, but all of our players were helping me out so much to let me feel comfortable. And I had an easier matchup, to be honest. So I'm gonna keep this hard work going. I think you were a bit nervous on interview stage. Yes, I'm sweating a bit on my hand. Let's go through some highlights right here. Your ultimate landed at Lucian. What was going on over here? So whenever a team fight happens, I'm ready to just ult him. So I, I have my eyes on the minimap, see where the opponents are located at. I think I need a lot of luck, so at that moment I was very lucky. Kingen, you're playing as a starting lineup instead of SMAP right now. Is there any pressure? 
No, there is no pressure. I mean, Smab is always helping me out so much. He always helped me during the screams. He gives me so much advice. And also, he, has, he gives me a lot of help in terms of mentality, so I, I really want to thank him. The KT roster. A tough schedule is coming up. Griffin, Sandbox, SK Telecom, and Griffin again in the beginning of second round robin. I think we are becoming more solid as a team. Our macro and rotation have become solid. So I think we are quite ready to show what we got from now on. Well, I haven't been playing on stage a lot, but I want to pull up some experience techniques and mechanics against a lot of players. This will be the end of the interview with Snowflower and Kinken, and I'm going to pass it back to the casters. Bye-bye! Oh boy. Here we go again. Thank you, Jisung, by the way, for the translation. Wonderful stuff. and. Uh, yeah, nice to see King and actually yeah. uh, doing well. Coming out, gets the Vlad the first time. Did actually do very well. Was uh, a little bit surprised that he wasn't able to pick up the MVP for that one even as well. So with that one, they uh, actually do go up and tie with Dom One Gaming. It's very interesting that uh, they have them at seventh place, even though it's two and four with negative two for both of them. But uh, unfortunately for Afrika fans, they do move down to ninth place. And the Jarvan does also do, uh, get a loss in that one. So, guys, that's the end of the first series. Our next one is going to start in about 40 minutes, I would yeah. expect it. So, it's not that hour-long break that we sometimes get. That can be a little bit ridiculous. A little bit shorter for you guys, even though it was a 2-0, mostly because of those delays. But either way, you take what you can get. And, guys, you don't want to miss the next one. will be Griffin versus Sandbox, the two undefeated teams, LS. Yeah, and that's going to be a super exciting series because someone has to walk away with the loss today. And it could even it could even be Griffin. You never know. Yeah. I mean, Sandbox is a fantastic team. They've already proven that, but this is going to be for sure their toughest opponent and their biggest challenge yet. So excited to see if there are shenanigans in the pick ban, if they actually just outplay Griffin, or if Griffin select another 2-0 and win. We'll have to wait and find out, guys. We'll join you in about 40 minutes.